everyone, welcome to this tutorial, part of our photo restoration series that we're running. And uh, in this tutorial we're going to be covering cropping and scanning, uh, the best ways to crop and scan your photographs. Uh, so let's get cracking. So here we have a photograph that's typical of scanners. You put it on the old scanning bed, push the scan button and uh, it scans your photograph for you. But it always seems to turn out a bit of a crooked state like so. And it no matter how much you try to get it straight, it'll always come out crooked. So the way we're gonna there's a few ways to do this really. You could measure this and and I've seen people getting a measuring tool out and trying to pick a straight point and put it down. It, it takes for ages to do it that way. Photoshop has got a great tool in it that helps you to crop and straighten this up in one foul swoop or one click of a button. And that is lives in this under here, file, automate, and you basically click crop and straighten. And once you do that, it even makes a backup copy of the photograph for you, which is handy, and you end up with a straightened photograph like so. Now obviously we could then proceed on just cropping this part here if we wanted to, and just go like that, and it's done in 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 that in a quick click of a button. So that's the automate um, tool which is very very handy and probably not a lot of people use it. Uh, they use the measuring. I see a lot of people in tutorials saying measure here and putting a little point there to straighten photos and that's probably the best way to do it. So what about if we've got the scanning bed full of photographs like this? Well, Photoshop's thought of that as well because it will actually crop and cut each photograph on on that scanning bed. So we've scanned all our photographs in now in a big block. And basically, if we do the automate, um, use the automate tool, it will actually crop each one of these and put them in a separate own file ready to be worked on. So the best thing to do is just make sure that when you're scanning, because this is not my, sc I've not scanned this, but if you were scanning it, make sure you try and leave it at least about three, you know, about three quarters of an inch an inch between each photo. You know, just because uh, Photoshop can then decipher the photo much easier and then chop it itself. If it's really close up, it might think it's one photograph and then it won't be able to crop. So it's best to actually try to leave an inch there. Anyway, so let's go file, automate, crop and straighten photo, and away you go, as quick as that, done. And we have our photograph all cropped up, like so, which is really, really handy. It's a right time saver, and so I use that quite a bit once I'm scanning photos in, because I hate scanning, it's boring. and if you've got hundreds of photos to do just fill the scanning bed up with photos hit scan and then save all your files like this and then just and automate them all in one go it's so much quicker anyway that's that method another one that you'll come across is when you've got a photograph that is too big to be put on the scanning bed now what I mean by that is if it's too long and I've seen people say to me on the forum oh you know how do I scan this it's too big I can't get it under the scanner and all sorts of stuff you know best way to do it is just scan what you can so say for instance scan scan this part of the photograph and then flip it around and scan the other part so now we've got two parts but they don't match up and it's one photograph and we want it back as one photograph. So what do we do? Well, basically we'll have to merge these two photos together. Now that sounds pretty tricky and pretty time consuming, but it's not, it's pretty simple. So all we need to do now is, I'll show you a quick way of doing it. So all we need to do is get your crop tool, just go over the top of the photograph like that, don't push crop or anything like that this back out a minute like so and what we 
want to do is we just want to pull this out like so and you know just pull it out and then click on your enter button or return now I've deliberately done this little white bit because I want to show you something at the end so I've deliberately pulled this white bit down but you want to just leave that end at the end there so now we've got our canvas white canvas on the end just bearing in mind that when you're doing that that if this color is here blue your background colors blue green orange red pink whatever color it will make this canvas that color so you, if you want to you want to try and use white so always watch out for that before you do it and it's a quick easy way to to make cards and whatever so anyway let's get our other photograph and we're just going to drag that on there on top of it because we've got our canvas there so the next thing I want to do is bring our photograph up and I want to I've seen people say you know stick the opacity down like so and try to get that blended in over the top it's all right, but it's it's tricky. I think the easier way to do it is this way. You'd go difference like so. Now we've got the dip. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger so we can see. Now you don't want to be looking at this part, this negative part. What the bit we want to be looking at is this this dark part down here, this strip. This is the bit we want to be look, concentrating on. And not this bit so what we're doing is we're going to try to match over the top now once this goes black once I get this black I know there you go that's it that's there as you can see black that means just you're on the, you're bang on where you need to be and that's I think that's a lot easier to do than the opacity way because you can actually see underneath a lot easier look you can actually see when you when you're square on now that is pure black there's not a bit of white now once you get to that stage you can use your cursor keys to actually do one pixel at a time until you get right over the top and once you're over the top and it's pure black like that that means you're right over the sweet spot that means you're right over the top of the other photograph and it's dead on so forget about the opacity way, do it this way, it's a lot easier and then once you've got your your photograph in the right place you click back to normal and there we have it now what you could do if there was any joining part here that was a bit rough you could stick a mask on and paint with black over the top like so and that will get rid of any marks or anything like that any join marks and that's that so that's the photograph rejoined and it took seconds so now you can scan those big photos that you couldn't scan before now the next thing I want to show you is this nifty little trick here which is pretty cool so let's just uh, let's just make that a bit smaller so you can get it all on the screen because it's so what we want to do now is we've got this surplus end here that we don't need. We could just crop that. But what happens if we've got a little bit of the end here underneath, which is pretty uh, tricky as well to get it dead straight. We don't want to lose any of the photograph. So the best way to do it, the best way to do it is go uh, image, trim, bottom right hand panel, uh, bottom right hand pixel color. Click OK straight away let's just trim that in one go all the bottom and all the end in one fell swoop and that's a real nifty little trick it's great if you're doing a lot of, if you're doing that all the time and you're doing cards and you're making cards and whatnot it's a really great trick to do anyway that's the end of this tutorial thanks very much for watching please leave your comments good or bad thanks bye for now